All right, good evening, church family. I'm Pastor Jason here with our Wednesday evening service. So looking forward to spending a little bit of time with you today. We're going to go over some prayer requests, go over some announcements, and then dive into the Word today for our Sunday school lesson. So if you have any comments or any um, requests that you'd like to for me to mention, go ahead and put those in the comments. Um, if something during the, uh, the message today is encouraging for you, I, I encourage you to put that in there as well, just to be a blessing to not only to me, but to others watching as well. So thanks again for joining in today. So good to see the people kind of rolling in. Um, let's just go over a couple announcements. Uh, Pastor Miss Kay will be arriving back before this Sunday. They're up in the UP enjoying themselves with some grandkids, some grandbabies, and uh, up there for the camp meeting. So excited for them and for them to be able to have the opportunity, excuse me, something in my eye, um, have the opportunity to be up there. And uh, just pray for their safety as they travel back. If you had not had an opportunity, uh, make sure you watch our Calvary on the Fly from this week. You have a great one from Pastor Camrad, and you have a great one from Brother Bob as well. Um, both of them are stupendous. They're amazing. I, I encourage you to watch it, share it, let other people know about it and how it was a blessing to you. Um, that can just go a long ways if we share it. Um, Pastor and I were looking at some of the analytics about our Facebook page, and... Um, Let's see here. I'm going to write down the prayer requests as I see them, guys. So um, we were looking at the analytics of our Facebook page. And what we notice is when, when five people share it, um, our, our likes, our watches, our views will only go so far. But when we get 10 people or more to share one of our, our sermons, our Calvary on the Flies, whatever it may be, if we can get 10 people to share it, we usually get at least a thousand views. And I don't know about you guys, that's really exciting to me. When we can get a thousand people to be able to hear the gospel, to be able to go through some of the things that, uh, or be able to hear some of the preaching of God's word and, uh, and, and just the help it can be to people, I encourage you to share, like, um, and it would be such a blessing to be able to get that out and just for us to be able to get as many views as possible. I don't, I don't do it from a prideful sense, I promise you that. I want to be able to share the gospel with as many people as possible and, and really that, that comes to you guys to be able to share it using your Facebook page. It's very easy, just click the little share button at the bottom when we're done and just uh, you can even share it and then mention how it was a blessing to you and that way you can personalize it. But a couple of prayer requests. I know that Corey, uh, Corey Jones has a heart cath next Tuesday. So pray for him about that. Um, I see roughly about four unspokens. Um, I know many of us have a prayer request. Maybe it's not something we necessarily want to mention, but it's something that's maybe on our hearts. And we know that we want to lift those up to the Lord. So pray for that. Um, pray for Pastor Miss Kay as they travel back uh, shortly um, this weekend. And that we can uh, all be back in the house on Sunday. And continue to pray for our country as we're going through uh, the recovery process of, of COVID-19 and people are starting to get back uh, to normal. People are going back to their jobs, going back to entertainment and stuff like that. So just pray that all that can, um, the Lord's will can just be done in that situation. So uh, Heather mentions here that her dad gets his PEG removed Wednesday. And if we could pray that that will go smoothly. Um, Holly mentioned happy anniversary, Pastor Jason. Yes, today is Deanna and I's 20th wedding anniversary. 20th wedding anniversary. What, uh, what a, uh, a sweet, sweet person Deanna is for staying with me for so long. So it's, uh, I definitely married up and thankful for her. She's at home watching right now. Um, what a blessing it is to be able to say that we've been married for 20 years, especially in today's society. That is a huge accomplishment. So thankful for her. And uh, for, for the Lord for putting us together. I know she mentioned, uh, she put on a little post on Facebook this morning and she mentioned that, um, you know, we, we, we knew when we got married, we, we loved each other. But uh, over time, we've noticed that, that God put us together because we're perfect for each other. And what a blessing that she is to me and an encouragement and a help she is uh, to not only my, um, just my walk with God, but just me as a person. I wouldn't be who I was if it wasn't for the influence of Deanna. So uh, let's move on. Um, of course, uh, continue to pray for our church as we get back to normal. Um, I do have an announcement. Uh, so this Sunday, this Sunday, mark it on your calendars, clear your schedule. I don't care what you have going on. You need to come to Calvary Baptist Church on Sunday. All right, put everything aside. All right, whatever plans you have and come and visit us. All right, so Sunday school at 10 o'clock. 
normal service at 11. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have our steak dinner right after the morning service honoring our dads and moms. All right. So I know um, Sunday is Father's Day, but it's also we want a chance to be able to honor the moms. You know, moms, you had to go through quarantine with your kids. So we want to um, be able to honor you as well as long with the dads um, too. So make sure that you put that on your schedule. Looking forward to it. We're going to have ribeye steaks. We're going to have uh, potatoes. We're going to have some other things. So looking forward to how God's going to bless at time of fellowship. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have our first afternoon service back here at the church um, in person. So what, what a blessing that will be. And I know it's going to be exciting. Buckle up. We have Terry Woodside. Um, in church on Sunday. So if you've never heard Terry Woodside preach, that man is a ball of energy. I'm excited to hear him. Um, he loves the Lord um, and he loves the church and he, it, it, I'm excited to have him here to be able to preach to us and just encourage us and lift us up with the word of God. So let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get started with our, our message tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to gather here today, Lord. I thank you for just the sweet uh, people that are watching right now, Lord, I just pray for each and every one of them, Lord. Pray for every family that's represented today. Lord, I do pray for the requests that are mentioned today. Lord, I think of Heather's dad. Lord, I think of the Unspokens, Corey's heart cast, Lord, our church, um, our country. Um, Lord, I pray that your hand can be upon each and every request that was mentioned today, Lord. I think of the Unspokens. Lord, we may not know the need, but we know you do. And Lord, we love you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, looking forward to uh, jumping in. So go ahead and open your Bibles to Psalm. All right, we're going to open to the very first Psalm. All right, it's not chapter one, it's Psalm one. Okay, so um, turn to Psalm one. All right, this is one of my favorite Psalms. Um, I remember when I was a, uh, a member of the choir out in um, Hawaii at Ohana Baptist Church that we, um, we sang a song and it was, uh, it was a choir special. And uh, yes, John, I will put the steaks in the refrigerator. Let me make sure I put a note in that. Steaks in the fridge. All right, I'll make sure I won't forget that, John. Thanks for uh, reminding me about that. So, but we actually sang this song as, as a choir special. And it, and it was great because you really hear the power of the words in, in this psalm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, have, we're gonna have a Bible study. I'm looking forward to that. It's gonna be... Um, informal. So if you have any thoughts or any questions or any anything at all you want to comment about this, uh, feel free to just drop it in the comments and I'll try to annotate it as we go. Um, as long as it if, it, if it doesn't uh, get too far behind and I can stay on track, I'll try not to get too distracted. Um, it's very easy for me to get distracted with the comments on here, but I, I want you guys to participate because that's one of the exciting things about this. Like even though I'm, at, I'm here at the church, uh, one of the Sunday school classrooms by myself, it's like I'm with you guys in each and every one of your living rooms um, or wherever you may be watching. But let's go ahead and uh, we're going to start with Psalm number one. All right, we're going to read all six verses first, okay? It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So this psalm here, it's really broken up into two sections, all right? So you got verses one through three, which talk about the godly man. And you have verses four through six, who, which talks about the ungodly man. So we're going to break this down and we're going to look at the godly man and the ungodly man. All right. So, so you can just follow along with me right on Psalm number one. So we're going to go together. I know, uh, Brother John, Brother John, such an encouragement to me, and he pulled me aside the other day, and he was so, so nice about it. He's like, Brother Jason, you uh, or Pastor Jason, how he said it, he's like, you talk really fast on your your live stream. So, Brother John, I'm gonna try to slow it down. I, I'm sorry, I get excited sometimes. I start rolling really fast. Um, so I'm gonna pump my brakes a little bit and make sure I slow down for everybody, um, and we'll go through each one. So Psalm number one. And we're going to start at verse number one. So first we see the godly man, all right? And we see that his path, all right? 
So the godly man's path, he is separated from the world. He is separated from the world. So what is this, exactly does this mean? All right, so the, a godly man does not listen to the ungodly man. You know, we are supposed to, see, uh, to seek counsel, all right? So that's one of the things. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So we are supposed to seek counsel, right? So what exactly does that mean? That means we should seek godly advice, all right? Seek the right type of advice. Um, Job 32, 7 says, I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. You know, there's a lot of wisdom that can come from experience. For example, if you've ever gone to the doctor, um, have you ever gone to a doctor that was maybe fresh out of medical school, right? So you have a doctor that's fresh out of medical school, or you have a doctor that has been out of medical school for 20 years, and he's been practicing medicine, and he's got 20 years of experience on under his belt. Uh, which doctor would you choose? You know, most people would choose the doctor that's been practicing a long time. Um, I love how they say practicing, right? Because, you know, really that's that's sometimes what physicians do. They practice on us, but but I would honestly choose the doctor that's been practicing for a, practicing medicine for a long time. Why? Because he has a, a wealth of experience and a breadth of experience that can only come through time, right? So it's one of those things where, you know, me as, as, as a trainer, when I try to train somebody something, there's only so much that I can do um, out of a book. Some things you have to learn just by experience. And, and many of us have uh, experience beyond all measure, right? So you can say, oh man, Pastor Jason, I've been saved for 20 or 30 years. And, and that's great. Share those experiences, all right? Um, so, uh, Proverbs twelve fifteen says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You know, if we go through life looking only through our own eyes, all right? So you guys ever been to Mackinac Island? You see how they have all the horses they have these little blinders so that the horses can't get distracted by their things, right? But all they see is what's in front of them. Now, if we go through life like that, we're missing the big picture. Um, there is a, a general, General Mattis, and he said, he said this. He said, if you haven't read hundreds of books, you are functionally illiterate and you will be incompetent because your personal experiences alone aren't broad enough to sustain you. All right, so... What that means is, you know, if we go through life and we only learn from our mistakes and our experiences, we are only going to go so far. Our, our walk with God is only going to be limited to just our specific experiences. But if we seek godly counsel and we look at others and we say, hey, how did you handle this? Um, how did you go through this? What are some things that you learned? You know, grab a hold of somebody, one of the senior saints that has been saved for a long time, that's been a member of a church, and say, hey, what are some things, if you could go back and tell your young self um, a word of advice, what would you tell them? If you could go back and, and encourage yourself a certain way, what would you say? I love asking those questions of people that are older than me so I can just learn from them and, and really be able to Walk closer with the Lord based upon other people's experiences. You know, if you've been saved for a long time, I encourage you to um, to share that uh, the, those. It's it's not necessarily secrets, but share that those encouraging uh, things that the God that God has done in your life with other people. You know, if you see somebody struggling with something that that God has helped you overcome. Share it. You know, if you've struggled with a certain sin and you see somebody, whether it be a friend or a church member, um, reach out to them, encourage them, be like, hey, brother, I know you feel like you're alone right now. I know you feel like you're doing this all by yourself. I know that you feel that no one else has ever gone through this before, right? Have we ever felt that way when you've, you've been dealing with something in your life, you've been dealing with the sin, and you feel like you're the only person that's ever had to go through this before? Friend, let me tell you, we have all struggled with sin. And, and I want to tell you that we are all on your side. If you're struggling with something today, um, reach out to us. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to help you and, and encourage you and let you know that that we that we love you, that we appreciate you, and that we can uh, God can help you overcome any sin. You know, not only do we have Jesus on our side, but we have other believers and other people that can help encourage us through the hard times. But let's look on that verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners. All right, so number two, the godly man does not linger with the sinful man. 
Do you guys know what linger means? So I, I looked it up and I, and I love this, this definition, right? So it says, linger is defined as stay in place longer than necessary because of reluctance to leave. All right, it's almost like um, loitering, right? You know, what is loitering? You, you're just standing somewhere where you don't really belong, right? And honestly, as, as a saved person, as a, as a godly individual, I should not spend tons of time with people that um, do not have the same necessarily uh, view of God as I do, right? We may, we may disagree on some, some other things, you know, whether it be political or different issues, but really if, if somebody goes against the word of God, I shouldn't linger around with that person, right? Um, our flesh has no problem lingering around sin. Um, it's an easy way to quench the Holy Spirit. You know, I want uh, the fruit of the Spirit to be abundant in my life. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, uh, temperance. Against such there's no law. I think I missed one in there. But I, I, I want the fruit of the Spirit to come out of me abundantly. And the only way to do that is by living a Spirit-filled life. But if we're constantly surrounding ourselves with sin and around um, uh, just uh, uh, problems then what it's going to do is it's going to quench that Holy Spirit and we're not going to see as much fruit. Have you ever heard of the, the phrase, he or she is a good kid, but just got caught up with the wrong crowd? You guys ever hear that? I, I, see, I hear that all the time in my job. I have people come in and, and you know, whether it be a mom or dad, they bring their, their young son or daughter to me and they say, well, he's a really good kid or she's a really good kid, but they just got caught up with the wrong crowd. You know, sometimes we're, we're guilty by association. You guys know what that means? Guilty by association? It means, hey, you just got blamed with everybody else. You know what? That happens to kids all the time, right? I, it happens to my kids. Like one kid will be doing something wrong, but the other one will be standing next to them. Guess what? They're both in trouble. Why? Because the other one didn't tell the one that was doing wrong to stop. So they're both guilty, right? But we uh, many times we're judged by the people we associate with. You know, if you hang out with thieves, people will think you're a thief. If you hang out with liars, people will assume you're a liar. You know, part of our responsibility as Christians is to abstain from all appearance of evil. All right, so that, that verse that's mentioned a lot in, in preaching and that type of thing, but abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, it takes a lifetime for us to build up our testimony. And if you're here today and you've been saved, you understand that how fast you can lose your testimony, how fast you can be uh, accused um, of something that that maybe you didn't even do, right? But accusations can destroy your testimony, even just an accusation, right? Innocent until proven guilty is not always the case. You know, many lives have been destroyed because they were accused of sin. You know, they could have been completely in the right, but the appearance was they were in the wrong. So abstain from all appearance of evil. Think about your appearance and your testimony before you do something. You know, if you just stop and take a second, you know that I try to tell my kids all the time, hey, think before you act, right? Think before you speak. Why? Because a lot of times we can save ourselves from a lot of mistakes and a lot of heartache if we just take a second and think about it before we say something, right? So um, think about your, your appearance and how your testimony will be impacted by what you say, you know, uh, Hebrews eleven twenty five says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I'm gonna tell you, sin can be very pleasurable, right? You can enjoy yourselves. If you're, um, you know, it, it, surrounded by sin, it can be fun sometimes, right? It can, it can, it can be uh, um, joyous. You can actually smile, right? Sin is enjoyable for a season, but just like summers in Michigan, the joy can quickly disappear and you're up to your waist in snow, all right? So let's move on, all right? The godly man does not sit with the scornful man. The godly man does not sit with the scornful man. Look at verse number one again. It, said, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So I see a few people have joined back in here. So if you're just joining in with us, uh, we're on Psalm 1, all right? So the very first book of Psalms, uh, Psalm number one, we're looking at verse number one right now. So uh, point number three, sit with the scornful man. The godly man does not sit with the scornful man. You know, scorn is defined as is extreme contempt or the disdain which springs from a person's opinion, 
of the, the meanness of an object and a conscious belief of his own superior worth. All right. When you think scorn, um, you know, many times, you know, you know, I, today is my 20 year, 20 year anniversary. There's been times where Deanna has, I've got the look of scorn from her based upon something I've done, right? Um, but, but anger, bitterness, judgment can be a hindrance to every relationship in your life. If you've ever, um, you know, struggled with something, your relationship with Jesus Christ can uh, be damaged through that. You know, when the Bible says not to sit in the seat of the scornful, it says don't act as a scornful person. You know, people can become bitter and contentious when they see others with what they think they deserve. All right, have you guys ever seen somebody maybe drive by with a, with, I, I get truck envy usually every year, right? Especially either either in the the snow or when I feel like, man, it'd be really nice to have a pickup truck right now. But you ever see a brand new pickup truck come by like, man, I wish I wish the Lord would give me something like that. Or you see somebody um, with with tons of blessings that, that maybe you don't have. But, oh, thank you, Brother John. So it's easy for us to get judgmental or bitter, but that's not the desire of God. So we may not understand why the Lord chooses to bless, bless others differently than us, but that's the key part, right? Just because someone is receiving a blessing doesn't mean that we aren't, all right? Just because someone is receiving a blessing doesn't mean that we aren't. Maybe you would rather have a financial blessing, but the Lord has given you health. Maybe you want a blessing of health, but the Lord's given you wisdom. You know, when we get bitter of others, we miss the blessings that are right in front of us. So I encourage you, if 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 you focus on others and if you focus on, on the ungodly who are living a certain way and, and you see that things that they're getting or, or blessings that they have, you're missing on the big picture of what God is doing in your life. All right, so let's look at verse number two. All right, we see uh, the pleasure of the Lord. So, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You know what? God's word is an amazing thing, all right? But God's word has captured his full attention. What is your source of delight, right? What is your source of delight? When when you think of something that makes you smile, what is it? You know, is it is it your spouse? Is it your children? Is it uh, your bank account? Is it um, just uh, maybe your health is, is, you know, what is it that makes you smile? You know what? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. You know, we live in a very materialistic society. You know, you think of all the different sales that are going on. You have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Labor Day, Memorial Day. You have all these different sales. If there's a holiday, there's a sale associated with it. Why? Because the world wants us to focus on things instead of God. It, it, the more we can, the more the world gets us to focus on things, and, and keep in mind, Satan is very subtle, all right? So the more we can think about possessions and what we have, we, we miss the blessing of God, right? True delight comes from the law of the Lord. And, and why was the law established? The law was established to point us to the Savior. The law was established for us to focus on, hey, I can't fulfill the law. I can't uphold all 10 commandments on my own every single day. I'm going to fail each and every one of them, right? So so because of that, I need a savior. That's the whole point of the law is to point us to Jesus Christ. You know, we have an understanding that we can't follow the law. We need someone to pay the price for our sins. That's when we can have true delight. You know, um, when, when you think of captured his full affection, you know, affection is a is a tender attachment, all right? Do you have that tender attachment to Jesus? Do you have that true love for him? But also, we see that it claimed his full attention. Uh, look at verse number two again, all right? It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. What occupies your thoughts throughout the day? Is it problems or is it promises, right? Usually it's one or the other, right? We think of, oh man, I have all this stuff going on. I'll be honest with you, my family is extremely busy right now. We have uh, we have movers coming in 12 days to my house. So we're in the process of trying to organize things, trying to get rid of things, trying to uh, make sure we spend time with, with people before we leave, making sure that we uh, get our homeschooling done, making sure we get college work done, making sure we get our job done. 
Um, it, it, it's incredibly busy, right? And it's very easy for, for us to focus on problems or stress instead of focusing on the Lord. You know, Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know what? We need to think about God. Why? Because God is all those things, right? God is true. God is honest. God is just. God is pure. God is lovely. God is of good report. God is virtuous. Um, and if there's any reason to praise anyone or anything, he's the reason that we need to praise him. You know, God desires us to think of him. You know, when I first started dating in Deanna, uh, wow, 22 plus years ago, um, Wow, she consumed my thoughts. She was all I could think about. Um, why? Because I didn't have a lot of responsibilities and I, and I thought she was amazing, all right? So at that time, I, I couldn't stop thinking of her. You know why? Because I was falling in love with her. I wanted her attention and she wanted mine. Do we give God that same attention? Do we give him credit when we have success during the day? Do we give him praise and honor even when things don't work out the way we want them to? Do we, have const, do we want to have constant fellowship with him? You know, that's important for us to remember that we need to get his full attention. But we also see the godly man in his prosperity. Look at verse number three. He is situated by the waters. Verse number three, it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, one of the great things about Michigan, if you've never been to Michigan, I know we have some people on here watching, but if you've never been to Michigan, Michigan has an abundance of beautiful trees. Um, so in a few short weeks, I'm headed out to Utah and you know, I'm gonna drive the thousand miles plus uh, across the country. And eventually I'm gonna get to the uh, desert, right? Where there's not a lot of trees. I'm going to miss all the trees. You know, we are compared to animals in the Bible. We think of a lot of times we're compared to sheep, but often we're compared to trees. Why? Because God desires us to be fruitful. So how do we become fruitful? Look at this verse, John 4, 14. I'll read this to you. It says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You know that verse number three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. You know, when we root ourselves in the word of God, we will bring forth fruit. You know, this, this is a great book to follow. This is a great book to spend time in. This is a great book to, uh, to just let God speak to us. And when we do that, we are essentially planning our, our, we're planting ourselves by the water, right? So the living word, the, the living water that Jesus is talking about in this verse is exactly what he wants us to do. When we root ourselves in the word of God, we will bring forth fruit. But we also see his permanence. Look at uh, verse number three again. It says, his leaf also shall not wither, right? I'm gonna be honest, I do not have a green thumb. I'm not very good. Um, my dad and my uh, stepmom right now, they're, they're building this huge garden and it, it, they put some pictures up just recently today and it looks amazing. It's green, it's luscious. They're, they're seeing fruits and vegetables come up and I would fail. If I tried to do something like that, I, I wouldn't do a good job. I've seen many plants wither in my possession um, and, and praise the Lord that as a child of God, you have eternal life and you will never wither like a leaf at the end of a season. You know, when you look at the... Uh, uh, fall here in Michigan, there's leaves all over the place, right? As green as they are right now, they will not last to next year. They will wither, they will, they will dry out, they will fall off, and they will just perish, right? And that's not what, what the Bible says here is that when, we're, when we have a tree planted by the rivers of water, his leaf also shall not wither. We can have eternal salvation because of that. And look here, we also see his prosperity. The godly man and his prosperity. It says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, what a great promise to know that when we're rooted in God's word, God's words, our actions are becoming everlasting. All right. What does that mean? Is that our actions, things that we do 
have eternal rewards. What a blessing that is to know that when I give to missions, when I uh, help with the Sunday school class, when I um, uh, give a love offering to an evangelist coming through, whatever it may be, those are eternal blessings, right? Those are eternal uh, rewards that are laid up for us in heaven. You know, we can, we can do a lot of things that, that can bring us um, joy and a lot of good things. But when you think of uh, prosperity, it's not just about financial prosperity, right? I want spiritual prosperity. I want to know that, that I'm laying up treasures in heaven, that I'm being a, in a blessing. I'm showing the love of Jesus Christ to others. All right, so that was all about the, 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 the godly man, right? So verses one, two, and three were about the godly man. All right, so what did we learn about? We learned about, here, let me go through my notes here. I don't wanna miss anything, all right? The godly man does not listen to the ungodly man, okay? We saw, talked about how the godly man does not linger with the sinful man. And then we talked about the godly man does not sit with the scornful man, um, we saw that his pleasure, that he's satisfied with the word, that God's word has captured his full attention. God's word has claimed his full, full attention. Um, and then we also saw his, his prosperity and how he is situated by the waters. All right, so now let's transition. All right, we're gonna flip right around. All right, so buckle up. All right, so we went through one through three, talking about the godly man. All right, and if, and if you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your savior, I want you to pay attention to these next three verses, right? Because this can, this is a little glimpse into to someone's future if they've never trusted Christ, all right? All right, so let's start with verse number four. We see the godless man, and we see that the godless man is different, all right? The godless man is different, all right? The verse number four says, the ungodly are not so. Let's stop right there, all right? So what, is that, what does that mean, all right? So if we look ahead, the, the ungodly are not as what? what we just talked about, right? We just talked about the godly man, all right? We went through verse number one, verse number two, verse number three, and the very first part of verse number four says, the ungodly are not so. The ungodly is the complete opposite of a godly individual, both in thought and in character, all right? The mind of the ungodly is unable to comprehend godly things, right? Not that they're not intelligent, all right? I wanna make sure that we we understand that. There, there, is, a, there, is, a, there is intelligence and then there's, spiritual understanding, all right? So 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Have, if you've ever had a chance to witness to somebody, maybe you've sat down with somebody that's, that's never heard the gospel before. They've never heard uh, about the good news, about Jesus dying on the cross for their sins, how they can repent and they can turn to him and he can save them and give them eternal life. They've never heard that before. And if, you ever, if you've ever started to, to witness to them, sometimes you see the look of just pure confusion in their face. And it's not because they're not smart. It's just because Satan is trying to confuse them. Satan is trying to get them to doubt everything that the word of God says, right? When you look all the way back to the story of Adam and Eve, Satan was all about placing doubt in our minds, all right, if, if Satan can get you to doubt the word of God, then he already has a victory in your life, right? So we don't ever want doubt to be in our lives about the word. You know, worldly thoughts a lot of times will lead to worldly actions. You know, there's no reason for us to judge, all right? We are all one bad decision away from being in prison. We are all one bad decision away from being addicted to drugs or from falling into uh, a, a deep sin from ruining our family, destroying our lives. We're all one bad decision away. So never look at somebody and think that you're better than them. Never look at somebody and think that, that you're better off or that they're, um, they're, they're not looked at as the same as, as God does at us, right? So we are, God is not a respecter of persons. He loves us all equally. And we need to show that love to others. You know, right now, all the things that our country is going through, I encourage each and every one of you, if you're listening today, you need to show the love of Christ to each and every person that you know. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. It doesn't matter the background. It doesn't matter their education status. None of that matters. What matters is, is that they are, um, they are a person that has a soul and they need a savior just like you and I do. Sorry, I kind of went off on a little tangent there, but have you ever seen a child make a mistake and the parent says, well, they didn't know any better. You know, even Jesus said that about the ungodly. You know, uh, Luke 23, 34, when Jesus was on the cross, he said, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, 
for they know not what they do. And they part his raiment and cast lots. You know, um, when, when you think about that, listen, we, we are all able to make mistakes. You know, we, we um, and that's one thing. Let me, let me back up. I want I don't want to get ahead of myself. So it's very easy for us to fall into any sin. And I, and I want each and every, if you're watching right now, I want you to realize you can be, you can fall into any sin. All right. It doesn't matter of, of being able to steal, to lie, to cheat on your spouse, to murder, um, to any of these things. Anyone can fall into any sin. So even if you're saved, you have to be very careful to protect yourself, protect your testimony, protect uh, your family, because all it takes is one bad decision. You know, when we, when we move on in this verse, look look at verse number four. Psalm number, if you're just joining, joining in, uh, we're looking at Psalm 1. All right, Psalm 1, verse number four says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. What is a chaff? It's the, the husk of grains and grasses that are separated during threshing. All right. So it's, um, you can literally, I take it and throw it up in the wind and it would just blow away. You know, Matthew Henry, Matthew Henry said this in his commentary. He said, the chaff may be, I love this. Make sure you listen to this. He said, the chaff may be for a while among the wheat, but he is coming whose fan is in his hand and who will thoroughly purge his floor. Those that by their own sin and folly make themselves a chaff will be found so before the whirlwind and fire of divine wrath, so unable to stand before it or to escape it. I don't know about you, that's a very scary thing to me, right? So we all have an opportunity to to, to make things right with God, all right? But look at verse number five. Look at verse number five. We're gonna continue on here. Verse number five, we're almost done. I appreciate you guys uh, paying attention and staying with me here. Um, verse number five, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You know, when you think about judgment, that is a very, very scary thing. If you've ever been to court for anything at all, it's pretty scary to stand in front of a judge. Um, praise the Lord, I've never had to stand in front of a judge and, uh, for anything like that, but but it, even if you've gone to maybe fight a ticket or, or gone, maybe you have done something to where you had to stand in front of a judge and really plead your case. Um, judgment can be a very scary thing. And, and when you look at the, the judgment of a righteous judge, we, we serve a God. We have a God of second chances, but there's a certain point where your second chance isn't going to matter. All right. And at that point, there are no second chances. The case has been made and the punishment is final at that point. And I want to encourage you, if, if you're watching right now, it's not too late. All right, the ungodly will never again be in the presence of godly individuals. It says right here, um, shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You know, even the most wicked person would not want to live in a world with no light. All right, and when I say light, I'm talking about spiritual light. You know, there's a lot of good people in the world. So, and I want you to, the media right now is making it seem like, like we are just, Every person you run into is a, is a wicked, evil person. And, and you know what? It, it, we're all sinners, but there's a lot of people that love Jesus and that are trying to show the love of Christ to others. And, and we, while we may think this world is an awful and wicked place, if you took away the light, the goodness of the world, it would be utter darkness. You know, I remember touring Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. If you've ever been there, it's a, it's a great uh, experience. You go to Mammoth Cave, and at one point in the tour, they shut off the lights so you can actually see how dark it is, right? So you're deep down in this giant cave. They turn off the lights. Never in my life have I experienced such darkness. I mean, it was to the point to where you could hold your hand right here, and you still couldn't see it. It was scary. It was dangerous. It was empty. And that's what life is like without Jesus. You know, when the Bible talks about death, you know, there's a physical death, but that spiritual death is what scares me the most being separated from God forever. That is not something I ever want to experience. And praise the Lord that, you know, I gave my life to Christ and I trusted in him for my salvation. So I never have to worry. I know that I have eternal life. And if you've never done that, I encourage you to do that today. Why? Look at verse number six. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know, people who don't trust in Jesus do not have an ad advocate for them at the great white throne judgment. They must accept all the blame and punishment for their actions. You know, everyone has a path that they will choose. If you're watching today, you may have come to a fork in the road before. You may have come to the fork in the road. One path leads to joy. 
and everlasting life. The other path leads to destruction and eternity in hell. And sometimes one path looks a lot better than the other, right? You may, you may have gone down that path of destruction. You may have gone down the, the path that, that's leading you to hell. And it's been rough. It's been a hard journey. It's been painful. It's been hurtful. Well, friends, it's not too late. You can turn and you can go down that other path. What path have you chosen up until now? If you're listening today and you've never trusted Christ, Jesus Christ as your Savior, it's not too late. Make today that day. You know, 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I love that word now. Do you guys, you guys know how important the word now is? It means right now. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Don't, don't keep casting Jesus aside. He's waiting with open arms to accept you, to forgive you for whatever you've done. There's nothing in your life that Jesus can't forgive you for. Nothing at all. If you just confess your sins, forsake any other way to heaven, right? We can do as many good works as we think. We can uh, help little old ladies across the street. We can give to different types of charities. None of that matters. What matters most is your, your faith and love in Jesus Christ. And, and I encourage you, if you've never trusted him for your salvation, you need to do that today. But maybe you're listening today and you're already saved. Are you living as verses one through three as the godly man? Or maybe you're living your life as the ungodly in verses four through six. If you're not honoring him with your thoughts and your actions, get it right today. Confess to Jesus your sins and he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins. So I encourage you, if you're ever struggling, look at Psalm 1 and just look at the, the comparison between the two. I don't know about you guys, uh, but I wanna live a life that honors God. I wanna live a life that, that, can, um, that can be a blessing to others. And, and I encourage you to, uh, to reach out, continue to pray for one another. Um, if you're watching today and you've never um, accepted Christ as your Savior and you, maybe you've done that today or maybe you just want to know how, please reach out to us. You can message us here right on Facebook. Um, you can uh, send us a message. You can call the church um, and we can walk you through the Bible how you can know for sure you're on, to on your way to heaven. So just a one more quick announcement. Um, I want to make sure that you guys understand this Sunday, special, special, special day, all right? So this Sunday, join us at, at 10 o'clock for Sunday school. Then 11 o'clock has our normal service. Brother, Terry, uh, Brother Woodside, Terry Woodside is going to be with us today uh, on Sunday. And uh, if you've never heard him preach, man, it's exciting. And then right after the 11 o'clock service, we're going to have our steak dinner, honoring our fathers and our mothers and just thanking them for the blessing that they've been to us. So you're, you're welcome. You don't have to bring anything. Uh, if you can, we have a sign-up sheet on our Facebook page and we can make sure that we have everything we need for Sunday. But other than that, I, uh, that's all I have for you guys tonight. Hopefully this has been a blessing to you. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's been a blessing to me and I miss you guys. Looking forward to Sunday, praying for you. Let's close with a word of prayer and then I'll, I'll end it here. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you once again for uh, this live stream. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of the families that checked in today. Lord, I pray you bless them. Lord, bless the rest of our week. We love you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys have a great day. Talk to you next time.